What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little passes at this is a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. I'm James, Uh-oh. and despite my lack of a ring, we're married and we like to get scared together. You were doing so good. I yeah, I know. For a while there. It's okay. I'm sorry. If you're wondering, wait, why are there two podcasts in a row? Uh, it's because we signed a contract in blood <laughs> with advertisers. So we have to have an episode out this week. So our schedule is a little wonky. That's been happening. That That is uh, the name of the game on the channel right now is, is we, we signed contracts and we have to get content We are out. beholden to them. We signed <laughs> them a while ago. But... Then we'll be good to go on our honeymoon yes, next month. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so you didn't know what to do for this week. Right. And I was in um, Universal Monster Mode, thanks to that Renfield video. And I was like, you know what? Let's fucking do the mummy. Yeah. The Brendan Fraser mummy. That that Brendan. Oh, I think I'm saying his last name wrong. People call me out on that. Is it Fraser? I think it's Fraser. But I, I, didn't, I always Fraser. think it was Fraser. Right. I don't know. Sorry, Brendan Fraser. That Fraser's so hot right now. Watch, we're gonna find out that's wrong, and then everyone yells at us. Whatever, whatever. He had the whale, which we didn't see, but he's just also even before the whale came out, he had like articles where it was like deep dives into Brendan Fraser's psyche, and I always liked him. I always liked him too. I had such a crush on him. How could you not? Yeah. So we're talking about the Mummy from 1999, Stephen Sommers. I was obsessed with this fucking movie in mm-hmm. sixth grade i would there was probably a period of time where i went home from school and watched this every fucking day really i i mean you heard me quoting the movie you did know we the whole thing it. by heart yeah. yeah yeah like little lines too like not right now it isn't like real just like little one-liner jokes mm-hmm. that have stuck with me forever uh and this is this was only your second time watching it yes i did not watch this as a child this would have been too terrifying for child me <laughs> Even though I think all of the stuff that is really scary in this is weird CGI. That yeah. is, it's st- it still would have been scary yeah. for a kid. But this was a movie that, and I, I, I mentioned her before, my friend Carrie, <laughs> shout out Carrie, uh, who was allowed to watch horror movies growing up and was not nearly as terrified of them, would come to school and recap the scariest parts of movies to me. And I, I kind of loved it. So that's how I... Uh, knew the opening scene of Scream before I ever saw Scream. Mm-hmm. And I distinctly remember at Girl Scout camp, we were camping at, I think it was, I don't know, we were out, it was like we were on like some camping trip with Girl Scouts and we were falling asleep and Carrie was telling me the scene where the scarabs crawl into the guy's skin. Yeah, and the prison warden. Yeah. Yeah. My imaginary version of that scene, by the way, so much more fucked up than it actually is. <laughs> Yeah. My little kid imagination. I mean, it's kind of fucked up at the end. He just runs head first into a wall and that's how he dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We watched this. I don't remember when. We watched it together your first time years Years ago. ago. Uh, 2017, 18 at the latest, maybe before then, but I think early dead meat. And I remember we weren't enamored with it. I was like, oh no, this movie's not great. And that's why you always got to rewatch movies to see your, your taste changing because we watched this last night. This movie fucking rules. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It is such a good adventure movie. At one point, I just said this movie is swashbuckling as fuck. Yeah. Which it is. It's that very should be on the poster. Swashbuckly. Yeah. Because there's so many stunt pieces. I feel like every scene is a big stunt. It's like a it's like an Errol Flynn kind of movie. There's so much action, so many practical things. There is a lot of CG. Uh, you know, it's 1999 CG, but I think it works for what it's conveying. I'm never like taken out. The Beatles look a little weird. The Beatles look. There are some scenes that definitely you can tell because I think CGI was limited by how many things you could like, how many um like particles or just elements of a thing, like oh, yeah. polygons and stuff. Like the big stuff. sand storms. Yeah, and I feel like you can still tell this is just like hit generate dust particles and you mm-hmm. can tell the kind of randomized patterns and shapes that's giving dust clouds <laughs> their formations but but i love fine. the depiction of ancient egypt uh even though there is like this artifice to how it appears i think it looks cool there are several establishing shots of cities 
that look like Star Wars prequels. They do. And it I, looks I was, like Naboo or something. Yeah, but that's fine. I'm fine it's, with that. It's fine, yeah. Uh, mostly, though, the action is fucking great. A lot of just stunts all over the place. You're at a, a Universal Studios stunt show watching this movie. It's, of course, Brendan Fraser at, I think, peak Fraser. He's just so funny and charming. And, and Oh, my gosh. He has so much charisma in this movie. Like, I think I saw someone say that there's a version of Guardians where he's the main, where he's Star-Lord. And oh, yeah? That's a version of that I would, could get into. Because hmm. he's so charming and not in a douchey way. He's a and little he, douchey. He is, but that's the thing is he's so likable <laughs> that it's it's really impressive how even though he's honestly straight up an asshole in some scenes, you still like him. You want to either be his friend or date him. <laughs> Much like Evelyn, played mm-hmm. by Rachel Weisz, who fucking rules. Yeah, she's, she's great, great in this. She's a librarian. She's proud of that. and uh, But she's also tough. She always fights back and she's smart. And she'll she'll defend herself against her boss when he asks why he employs her Mm -hmm. after she knocks down all those bookcases in that awesome shot, that one shot that just circles around. The bookcase dominoes. It's awesome. There's so many little moments like that that are great. She does feel like she's written like a pre-code, like female uh, comedy character. Oh, yeah. Romantic comedy character where she's kind of sassy and she's smart and her and the the male lead are kind of, you know, the tension is there and, and they forth, kind yeah. of, yeah, they, they kind of bite back and forth at each other, mm-hmm. but they want to fuck the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's great. And I like that he, and he respects her pretty much right off the bat. You yeah. Know? He's following her lead. Uh, he's not dismissing her like the Egyptologist who's part of the American expedition. <laughs> he's like, mm, yes, women. <laughs> They're led by a woman. What does a woman know? <laughs> I also- like It's so ham-fisted. <laughs> <laughs> this movie always appealed to me because it's one of those movies with just a fuck ton of characters. There's you got like the Americans with the Egyptologists. You got the, the warden. You got Benny. Benny, who is <laughs> the just the little squirrel from Ice Age. Like Benny was my favorite character. Benny was your For favorite? For sure. I would quote all of his fucking lines. That's so funny. And now he annoys the hell out of me. Yeah, he's super annoying. He's so annoying. And he's in Deep Rising. So uh, spoiler alert, the first kill count that Zoran's doing when he takes over after I'm done with frogs this week uh, is Deep Rising, which was directed and written by Steve Somers, mm-hmm. who, who made The Mummy right after. Uh, so oh, this is much better than Deep Rising. It is. Deep Rising's fine, because I rewatched it after we covered it on the podcast. I rewatched it for the kill count. It's fine, but I think he definitely sharpened all his skills for this. Yeah, like, especially weird CGI. He worked a lot more. <laughs> it's the same team <laughs> who did it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think everyone oh, like boy. had a practice run with Deep Rising, and then went to the mummy. But (laughs) the guy who plays uh, Benny is in Deep Rising playing Mm -hmm. pretty much the same character. Yes. Uh, Very annoying. Only in that, he's a a good guy. Here, he's a villain. Uh, Here, his character, all the subtitles say he's Hungarian. And I guess he's a Hungarian character. But I never knew that as a kid. Mm Because I feel like he's coded to be like an Arabic He's character. He's just one of the Eastern others. Character. Like he I is. think this, the specific ethnicity doesn't even matter because I think this movie is kind of like Americans, British, everyone others. else. Yes. That's the one <laughs> thing. And that was why when we watched it a few years ago, we were like, eh. The, the, the one our downside. Our smelly friend. Ooh, our stinky friend. Stinky, like, all right, man. greedy friend. Yeah. Calm down, British guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, if, say no more. If, the, if there's one bad thing I'll say about the movie is it's imperialist <laughs> flavor. <laughs> we were, we so we did a little uh, a double feature. We, we watched uh, the original Mummy first, the Boris Karloff mm-hmm. Mummy, before we rewatched this. And, we were joking, <laughs> watching the original, like, dude, what if this original is somehow less racist than the the newer one? Yeah. And I, they're like on par. They're on, not, it's I'm, it's like how do you? Because I think the the original's got some some brown face in it, black face. Oh, with the Nubian. I think the Nubian is a dude in makeup. What's a Nubian? If it's <laughs> if if he's yeah, not, so then I. I don't know. I we I, this was such a short notice episode. I wish I had more time to do some like actual homework here. Mm. If that guy is not in makeup, apologies to He's dead, don't worry. Yeah, sorry guy. Well, apologies to his estate. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But Yeah, the 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 new mummy it, it watching it now, I wasn't as like, God, this is racist. It just has that tone of like 
Oh yeah, these uh, like especially it's the warden. It's, it's the warden who just warden. feels like and a it's, stereotype. It's tropey. It's it, yeah. it's kind of I think a lot of adventure type movies where it's like Western man in the East, it, the Middle East. Yeah, you have like those kinds of characters, like Indiana Jones, mm-hmm. and you they've know. all got those elements to it. So mm-hmm. it's up to you if you think it's too much and it ruins your enjoyment. That's fine. That's fair. This time through, I was able to just enjoy the rest. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a fucking fun. Movie. What's what's wild, and we were talking about this while we were watching it, is like our standards for <laughs> movies now are just so bottom of the barrel in terms of like visual um like how visually exciting something is or mm-hmm. how like just movie magic like movie magic is a real thing and i feel like we're lacking in movie magic right now like top gun maverick is is movie magic mm-hmm. you know and this because there's so many stunt pieces and big chase scenes and fight scenes and so much choreography i'm like damn this is it's movie magic. Yeah, just seeing a bunch of people ride horses. Yeah, I'm like, cool. Those are real horses, real people riding them. Yeah, one guy, a real person, gets trampled by a fucking camel. A camel runs over a man for sure. But it's it's <laughs> weird because as much weird CGI as there is in this, there's so much practical stuff too. And I think just because like there's such a dearth of that now, it makes this movie so much better in retrospect. And I can't tell if it's because this movie is actually good or if we're just so starved for that. I don't know. (laughs) Well, while we were watching, you were like, this isn't a good movie, but it's fun. And I would say it is great at what it is at at, uh, creating a feeling. Yeah. And it's cozy. And I, I just saw this in the Wikipedia article that Roger Ebert said there is hardly, he, he gave the film a positive review writing there is hardly a thing I can say in its favor, except that I was cheered by nearly every minute of it. Sure, okay. I cannot argue for the script, the direction, the acting, or even the mummy, but I can say that I was not bored, and sometimes I was unreasonably pleased. Yeah. That's, man, that's Roger, all you need from a movie sometimes, Roger man. Roger was one of the greats. As much <laughs> as he often hated horror movies, his writing was just so good, and I love how often he was just like, I can't tell you why I liked this. I liked it, though. <laughs> Three stars. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. I'm like, individual elements of this, I can't be like, this is the best thing ever, or like, this is so exceptional, but it all comes together to make something real nice that I find very pleasant watch. to watch. And all, also, I almost, because um, I, I exclaimed halfway through, this feels like a popcorn movie. I'm going to make some popcorn. Oh, and I almost story. burnt the house down. Yeah, hey, we started a fire in the we, kitchen. What? We, yeah. yeah, hey, this is the first you're hearing of this. Uh, we I had started Jiffy a Pop. fire on the stove. We did not have had, microwave popcorn. We had Jiffy, we had Jiffy Pop, Pop from, was it screen. from, we did a screen, you did a screen yeah. video. You like it like a movie. You yes. set the Jiffy Pop on fire. Yeah, because I was trying to take the the cardboard top. He goes off here, the Jiffy darling. Pop, I t- yeah, he, he and I think I tore a little, little bit of the edge of a of, of the, the foil. foil. So she starts popping it, and it starts and then going. it starts coming out the side. But the popcorn comes out the side straight into the burner. And it's funny because at first we're like, we're oh, like, oh, 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 this it's just is funny. popcorn Then the going flame everywhere. keeps growing and the popcorn keeps feeding the <laughs> and fire. And then we panicked. And then we panicked a little. And we tried I flipped to, the pot over it. I put it out. We tried to find your like blanket for fires. Like I a fire blanket. I couldn't find it. Yeah. It, so it, that was a diversion. Yeah. Um, and anyway. then when the movie finished, Chelsea was like, that movie was so long. I was like, no, hon. We almost started a fire in the middle <laughs> of it. We had to put out It's a two hours and five minutes. It's a perfectly acceptable length. For a fan or an adventure epic, but yes, it is a popcorn movie, burnt or otherwise. Mm hmm. A hundred percent. This movie was very successful, and it's both sequels were successful. Yeah, I kind of because I never really paid attention yeah. to these movies. I couldn't believe how many sequels and weird so this little... came out in 1999. Mummy returns two years later, 2001. Whole gang returns. Stephen Sommers writing and directing. Whole cast, everyone returns. It again makes all three of them made 400 something million dollars at the box office. Uh, I'm glad that the leads are back because they're true love in this. Yes, and they're in Mummy Returns. They're married and have a eight year old son, as they should be. Like uh, they're such OTP. The Mummy Returns is the uh, debut of the Scorpion King, played by The Rock, with one of the worst instances of CGI 
ever. Yes. That's from The Mummy Returns. That's not from the movie The Scorpion King, which, I, I was... which was then a separate prequel to those films that came out starring The Rock and then had four or five sequels that did not have The Rock and I believe went straight to video. That's what The Rock's got to do to get his career, his movie career back on track is just do another Scorpion King. Like make it real fucked up and weird. That'll work. I would, I would see it. <laughs> You know, like a really violent Scorpion King movie. And then in 2008, there was a third Mummy movie that I never saw. I saw that second one in theaters for show. Well, because it's not Rachel Weisz. So I'm she, like... Yeah, everyone else returns. Brendan Fraser, uh, John Hanna, who plays the brother. Uh -huh. But they're all just pretending that uh, Maria Bella, I believe her Maria name Bello, is. Maria Bello, yeah. Yeah, who takes over for Rachel Weisz is just, oh, yeah, it's our Evie. Oh, and like, uh, there I, are a lot of... I would be so distracted by that. Yeah, because Rachel... Their Vice, chemistry is so rules. crazy yeah, in this. Yeah. I just believe them as a couple. It just, you can't, I don't know. It just icks me out to swap her out. I guess it was a, it was a scheduling and she just had a kid maybe? She just had a kid. It was scheduling. And then they also pushed, uh, they, they set it far in the future in post-war China, like 1940s China, so that the son could be a 21-year-old character. I wonder how they age Rick O'Connell, Brendan Fraser in it. Uh, they probably just give him older. some salt my and guess pepper. Is zero. Yeah, yeah, my guess is zero to age him up that much, but whatever. Uh, I would watch both those sequels, honestly. I know, I would Especially too. Mummy Returns, I would Mummy watch. Mummy Returns, not bad. Yeah? Not as good. Commentary track? Not bad. Oh, that could, that be, a could be a fun, fun commentary one with track. fucking Scorpion King showing up. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I probably won't check out the Scorpion King movies, but you know what? If they want to make a, a legacy sequel... Bring it on. I believe Brendan Fraser has said that he would play Rick O'Connell again. Oh, man, that'd be so great. Uh, I wonder if Rachel would, and I'm sure everyone else would hop on board. Yeah. Arnold Vosloo fucking rules as Imhotep. Get he's Dwayne Johnson back in the... <laughs> what is Scorpion? He's like a he's like a man on top and then Scorpion on the bottom, right? Yeah. Is that his deal? Yeah, yeah. Get him back in that the Scorpion suit. Let's go. I know it's <laughs> I know, CGI, there's, yeah, but... there's no suit there. Put ping pong balls he's got over like, his uh, legs. Let's do it. He's like Mataro kind of from Mortal Kombat. Okay, yeah, yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, think Dwayne Johnson even like remembers doing like anything for The Mummy Returns? Because is he even in it that much? It's not a lot. It's near the end. It probably took some pictures of him. We're like, all right. <laughs> it's very bad. Scene. Here's you. We're just going to make a mock-up of you, and you don't really need to be here for this. So yeah, just say some lines into this microphone. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'm interested. All right. Well, this movie starts in Phoebes. Yes. Phoebes. I thought the opening scene was another production company logo until it kept going, and I realized that it was the opening. Yeah. Because <laughs> that sphinx head looks like a production company. <laughs> I think it started on Pyramid, this movie. But it also, it still looked like a production. It does, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, it's Ancient Thebes. And we get a little bit of a variation compared to the original mummy because it was mm. still, Imhotep was a priest who was in love with Anxana Moon, whereas in this, she's Anx... Uh, uh, Anxana Moon. That's the way it's Boris Karloff different. says it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anxana <laughs> uh, But she is the pharaoh's mistress in this one instead yeah, of instead the Instead of his daughter. daughter. Either way, Pharaoh ain't happy with Imhotep. Imhotep's like a priest. He is, yeah, in both versions. Mm -hmm. And he's got the gold man group backing him up. Mm -hmm. uh, they're pretty cool. And this, the Pharaoh's mistress, or the 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 love interest, rather, because she's the daughter in the original, she uh, is kind of in on the whole thing from the beginning uh, in terms of, you're going to resurrect me. Yeah, she tells him to do that, and then she kills other. herself. She kills herself in yeah. the original the daughter is just she she's dying and and dies and Imhotep's all Imhotep's like, like shit. I gotta bring her back. And mm -hmm. so then when she uh is basically brought back to life, she's like, whoa. I'm sorry. It's it's how much uh longer? It's 3,700 years in yeah. the future. Damn. And this one, when she comes back, she's that like dusty mummy who's fighting yeah. She's Rachel. real crusty. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. She's played by Patricia Velasquez. Marta from Arrested Development. I had no fucking the idea. weirdest. I I as soon as she showed up, I instantly remembered. Oh yeah, the actress who plays her is someone where you're like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and yes, it's because it's Marta, which is great. Yes. Su hermano. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, her, what is it? Her organs are put into five jars. Jars. We're fetch quest type mm -hmm, mm -hmm. bullshit going on. Gotta so 
Yes. And then uh, he tries to bring her back, which involves killing her, which is also in the original film. But he's stopped before he can complete the ritual. And they, they uh, give him the old Hamdai, an ancient curse that had never... I, I like how it's like the worst of the curses and had never been done before. Meaning someone thought someone it up. Someone thought of it and everyone was like... Wow, dude. Yeah, they're like, dude, that's fun. We okay. can't do that. He's like, we'll yeah, write but just it. In case. We'll write it down, but like, we're never doing that. Yeah. That's fucked up. You would think that they would come up with those as they were applying yeah, them. Yeah, like, it's honestly fucked up you thought of that. <laughs> yeah. And then, lo and behold, they're like, all right, I guess we'll do it to Imhotep, mm -hmm. which is just mummifying him in a shot that looks very similar to Boris Karloff being mummified in the original. I that, just... I was surprised by the little nods to the yeah, original. Yeah, I was this. too. I'm mm -hmm. glad we watched the original before this. Mm -hmm. I just think it's so funny that... The, another part of that curse is like, and if anyone is ever, uh, you know, brought back to life, they will bring about the end of the world. Uh, but that's not our problem. Let's do it. Sorry, <laughs> people in the future. Yeah, and they, it's it keeps Imhotep alive so that he can be I eaten by beetles forever so. or some shit. He's basically just because they, I mean, they bury him alive, and I think it, the ritual kind of makes him immortal almost. Yeah, it's a big old exposition dump in the beginning, done through narration by uh, the Magi. O the Magi, Oded Fair, uh, it plays him. He's in a bunch of stuff. His character's name is Ardeth Bay, which is the name, the alias that the mummy goes by in the original film. Yes, he introduces himself as a historian. It's so Ardeth funny. Bay. In the original, the mummy, who is only a Carla. mummy for like two minutes yeah he comes back to life and he walks on out of the burial chamber and then he shows up a scene later in normal people clothes well, like it's he, 10 years later oh that's right yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> but it's the next scene yeah it is <laughs> and he's got a fez on and his crusty ass skin. and he walks in and he looks nasty his skin is clear it like it's clearly like a dead guy yeah you know he smells and is super cold and just but it's just so funny because he's like yes um i am a local I am a very much alive man. Uh, please let me help you on your excavation. Do not touch me. Um, <laughs> what is the East, weird Eastern superstition? It's, it's a line that they take directly in this film it's, when Benny's helping him out. He's like, oh, he doesn't like to be touched. Uh, silly Eastern superstition. That's like a direct quote from mm -hmm. the first movie, mm -hmm. which again, would have had no idea if we didn't do a double feature. Yeah, yeah. So. Very fun. That first one's only an hour 15. Check it yeah, out. Yeah, it's it's truly fun to just watch the mummy walking around like, hey, normal guy here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me show you how to unbury this uh, chick that's definitely not my dead girlfriend. <laughs> I'll show you where she is. No fee. I'm doing this because I'm a nice, normal guy. So they bury Imhotep, and then we jump forward to 1923 in a big old fight scene. I love how we get this epic ancient scene with all this fun like romance and stuff it makes and then, me think of the wishmaster opening for some reason oh yeah that's also in well that's uh not quite as ancient that's in like um that might be more ancient century oh, i think really in wishmaster i thought it was like sumeria no no it's um pre-islamic iran oh okay i wasn't sure when that took place yes yeah so like persia mm -hmm. uh-huh i feel like just very similar um historically inaccurate outfits where sure, everyone is sure. kind of scantily clad or painted. <laughs> yeah. Wishmaster. I promise those co-counts this year. Fucking love those movies. Yeah. The first two. <laughs> the second one's like not good, but still. It's still fun. It's good. <laughs> All right, so yeah, a big old war scene between the French legionnaires or some shit. Rick O'Connell, Brendan Fraser is fighting in them. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess he's second in command because when the lead guy gallops away, Benny's like, looks like you got a promotion. <laughs> and uh, Rick O'Connell takes charge. He's a brave man. Benny's not. He runs away. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Benny. That's a runner. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is great. He's like, as the Magi are char... Or, no, are they the Magi? The Magi, right? Is, so is they're descendants of the Pharaoh's guards that protect... The what's the city of the dead? Hamanoptra. Hamanoptra. Hamanacha. So that no one gets down there and resurrects the mummy. But it's also got a lot of gold in there. There's so a lot people of gold. be trying to get it. Yeah. But so their job is to just protect this. You know, maybe put the gold in a different place. That's smart. You and then, have, I mean, it's a lot. It is. It's gonna. There's not. Yeah, an but easy they did that way. update where where the harpoon just automatically sets oh, okay, it. Okay, you know, sure. Don't have to unload it. Let's yeah. See if thieves show. Uh, yeah, so the the Magi, I love this fight scene, and I love how 
in this and then later when the Magi like raid the camp and lots of people die, there's kind of this like sporty air to it where they're like, all right, we killed some of you, you killed some of us, but like we can talk and like chat about it. It's mm-hmm. just like, whatever, you know, we're just doing what we do here. Mm-hmm. But uh, Rick O'Connell's like, Runs out of ammo for his rifle, takes out two pistols, runs out of ammo with those, takes out another two pistols and is fighting. It's so, like you said, swashbuckly. Yeah, such good weapon choreography in this. Mm-hmm. Like, He's just lots of horses. gunslinging. Yeah. We're all <laughs> gunslinging, like crazy in this. Slinging them guns. Slinging guns everywhere. And uh, they eventually get him down after he sees, like, a face in the sand. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's up. a big old face. Mm-hmm. So he knows there's something Supernatural something in the there. sand. <laughs> Is that a song? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm tired. Okay. Then we jump forward three years to the modern year of 1926. And that's when we meet Evie. Yeah. Our wonderful librarian. Mm-hmm. I like Evie. She's great. She's kind of like a mix between like Belle and Jane from Tarzan. Oh. In terms of like just character archetypes, kind of. Yeah, I mean, she's uh, definitely a, a bibliophile. Mm-hmm. She has that fun little stunt on the uh, tall ladder. I love ladder. the little ladder stunt because she is <laughs> she has a ladder leaned up against one bookshelf, and then she has to put a book away that's on the shelf behind her. So she starts leaning backwards, and then it makes her ladder tip to where it's like balanced between the two. So she's basically walking on it like it's stilts. Mm-hmm. And that's when she falls over and knocks all the bookshelves over. The domino thing is great. It's, it's just so this good. unbroken shot that circles around as they fall. I wonder how it's many like takes Kiwi they did It's like Kiwi with the motorcycles outside of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a drunk ass brother, Jonathan. Jonathan sliding doors is, uh, oh my God, what is the actor's name? Fuck. John Hanna. John Hanna. I just think of sliding doors. And it's so weird because that is a very different character than this. Like, it it's so weird that because again I didn't grow up with this movie so to me he's the guy in Sliding Doors he's like a love interest okay. yes and watching this it's it's honestly wild to imagine him as a love interest if like this is your reference point for him for sure but he's like the most romantic man in that movie he's just like a, a very dr- drunk uh, he's a fail son he is but he he has he has a heart of gold. He does, and he's not entirely incompetent. No. Like, if it's not if it's not for him on the boat, they wouldn't have the key. He grabs it mm, from the fire, mm-hmm. from the Magi with the hook. He wants to be helpful. I yeah. Think. And, and, you know, I think O'Connell comes around to him. He punches him when he's in jail, and then pretty much immediately is like, we're cool about that, right? And, and I love that job. This, like, happens all the time. And then, like, later when it's those two against all the Americans with guns, O'Connell's like, I've had much worse odds. And he's like, yeah, me too. And O'Connell's like, Really? And he's like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I just love all the little relationships between them. Yeah. I think that the brother definitely wants O'Connell's approval. I definitely. think he's like, this guy's really cool. And I he want also, him to like me. He also respects his sister. And yeah. And cheers her on. He never belittles her or dismisses her. No. He's always like, when she's, uh, when they're racing to the city and she takes the lead, he's, like, he's all like, yeah, get it. Evie. Yeah. They're cute. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a great trio of protagonists. Mm-hmm. For sure. So yeah, he tells Evie that he's found this thing that uh, it leads looks to... like a lament configure. It looks like a sequel lament configuration. Yeah, it's like a little box that opens up into a star, and we know it's a key to all sorts of things. It's it like opens a one up... size fits all. That key. seems like an oversight. That on is the a part security of the oversight. Egyptians. Yeah, they I need a like better. I feel like you should not have a skeleton key like that That's... opening up all of your shit. They're that using won't... the same password for all their accounts. Yeah, man. it really is just password one two three to resurrect direct this man that will bring about the end of days. Yeah, like, it's it's for the sarcophagus. Do better, ancient Egyptians. It's for the books, both of them, I both think. Both of the books. It's just all, yeah, one size fits all key. Yeah. But he founds it, and he says he found it on an expedition, but he actually stole it from a drunk American mm-hmm. who is in prison now. That American's name? Rick, Albert, Rick O'Connell. Oh. Yeah. Albert Einstein. <laughs> this is when they go to see him in jail, and Rick O'Connell uh, punches Jonathan and forcefully kisses he Evie. He does, because mm-hmm. he's about to get hanged, so he figures, why not? And I'm like, that's assault, brother. <laughs> brother, that's assault. <laughs> Again, it's very like Errol Flynn swashbuckler. Yeah, character. yeah, yeah. You know, it's, look, we're not saying Rick O'Connell's not problematic, <laughs> but... <laughs> it's it's a movie. And I mean, it is it it works in that it gets her wet. Her well, yeah. I was gonna say Twitter painted, but wet works too. Yeah, do Twitter painted. Twitter painted, like in Bambi. It's like all I'm all Twitter painted. Russell knows what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> no, he doesn't. No, Twitter page. Twitter page. Are you serious? Yeah. It's like when he meets the, I think it's when he meets the girl skunk. Like there's like the two skunks and he's like, oh, Twitter baited. No, oh, that sounds like uh, when you're stuck on the toilet and you're scrolling your phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all Twitter baited. What are you doing in there? I'm sorry, I'm Twitter, I'm Twitter baited. baited. Hey, I want to talk to you about our first sponsor this week, Evil Dead Rise, the fifth installment in the beloved Evil Dead franchise. You've still got plenty of time to watch all four other movies if you haven't seen them, and you might as well check out James's kill counts on them if you'd like a quick refresher. The newest movie, Evil Dead Rise, comes out on April 21st. This time, we're out of the woods and into the city. Two estranged sisters, played by Lily Sullivan and Alyssa Sutherland, are thrust into battle with flesh-possessing demons and end up facing the most nightmarish version of family imaginable. I also keep hearing that this one is one you want to see with a crowd. It's gross and mean and all around a pretty good time. Evil Dead Rise is only in theaters on April 21st and tickets are on sale now. Go to EvilDeadRiseMovie.com to get your tickets to see Evil Dead Rise in theaters April 21st. Our next sponsor this week is Daggrass. Daggrass is bringing back the chill of the casual smoke so you can kick back without the stress. Daggrass is legal organic smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-rolled joints are low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy all the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. And if you don't smoke, Daggrass also offers CBD gummies and tinctures made with the same high quality hemp. Easy to dose and the effects come on smooth. Really great for sleepless nights since you don't have to worry about paranoia. The best part is that all Daggrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it'll ship right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Right now, Daggrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to daggrass.com slash deadmeat. Go to daggrass.com slash deadmeat for 20% off your first order. One more time, that's daggrass.com slash deadmeat. Uh, so the, he's going to be hung by the warden, Gad Hassan. I don't know if they ever fucking say that guy's name in the movie. I don't think they call him our smelly friend. <laughs> yeah, he's our stinky friend. Our smelly son of a bitch, nasty spit. Yeah, oh, fuck. that fucking that disgusting. Gross, round man. <laughs> yeah, our rotund, fetid <laughs> friend this fucking villain from an aladdin tv series dude a hundred he's like in the like in the third aladdin movie he's one of the thieves that yeah, sings the yeah. song like welcome to the party <laughs> it's uh omid jalili i don't he's he's british but he was uh his parents are iranian so okay um, but he is you know still playing like it's tropey. It's tropey. It's tropey. Yeah, it's tropey. That's what the movie is. He's, he's great. funny though. I he's think he's a funny character. He has a lot of fun, like little lines and delivery. When they're arguing about the cut, and she's like uh, working de- up. Oh, she pulls a Bugs Bunny on. Yeah, him. she falls for a Looney Tunes thing because he, he's like 50, 10, 40, 20. She says thirty, and he's like twenty five, and she's like ah, yeah. He's like mm-hmm. ah. Uh, yes, this is when they go to hang Rick O'Connell. And boy, does that look real. And apparently it almost did kill uh, I don't know, yeah. Brendan, too. Not a stunt double. No, oh, they, they straight up were like, yeah, fuck it. I guess. I, I'm going to have to look into it because I just saw like a little high. I just saw uh, one sentence on the Wikipedia article. But he suffered injuries from that and I'm assuming other scenes. I think this movie fucked him up real bad. And yeah. it seemed to fuck up a lot of the cast and crew, some of which had to be airlifted out of the desert due to animal stings and bites. Their uh, medical team had to develop a thing that they would drink every two hours to keep them hydrated because they were shooting in the desert. They were shooting in, uh, they wanted to shoot in Egypt, but they couldn't because of political reasons. So they shot in Marrakesh in Morocco Mm -hmm. and uh, like out in the Sahara Desert. I saw on the wiki that all the actors had to have kidnapping insurance. Yeah. So that's reassuring mm-hmm. but yeah this hanging scene when it happens we were both like jesus like, yeah, that looks God. violent yeah but because it doesn't break his neck instantly it allows evie to bargain for his removal but the warden's gonna come along with them when, when he's when he shows up to go with them to find the city of the dead her disgust is so pure and just uncut because he shows up and she's like what the fuck are you doing here ew god you're gross 
ugh, Mm -hmm. I have to sit next to you now. Also, I want to cut an alternate version of this scene where when they hang him, just end of movie. That's that's, a universal universal picture. picture from from the old universal movies. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Now they're leaving Guy's Giza port Mm -hmm. on a boat. And so now we have a boat scene. Yeah, of course. I just love, I feel like they rode in a boat so that we could just do boat stunts. This boat stunts, We can be man. throwing people off the boat. Hell yeah, so many people get thrown off that boat. Because mm-hmm. they're they're heading to Hammurab- uh, Hammurabi? Who, no, Hamunaptra. 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 Uh, they're, they're heading there, and they meet another expedition, the Americans, who are also trying to get there. Yeah. And so the Americans are these- The Red Dead Redemption characters. Oh yeah, the yeah. three of them? Yeah. Because there's the trio of Americans, there's- uh, glasses guy, mm-hmm. other guy, and then guy who auditioned for Rick O'Connell and didn't get the role. Yeah. No, that's legit. The yeah. actor legit auditioned for Rick O'Connell, didn't get the role, but they're like, you're pretty good. And you're also s- dad from Paranormal, Paranormal Activity, Activity 4. 4. Yes, who sadly passed R. away R. on his 48th birthday of a heart attack. Fuck, man. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's the dad in Paranormal, so we must have talked about him in our Paranormal Pool Party years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's great. As yes, the he American is. Here. There's a shot during all the the fire and fight sequences where there's a fire guy trying to attack Jonathan and the this American sees him, Henderson, and it's like this pushing on Henderson, fucking shooting, and it is so funny. His face and the pushing are great because the Americans are just like, yeah, now we're rooting, tooting, shooting mm-hmm. on this boat. It's a great time. Mm-hmm. This is what they signed up for. With the with the Egyptologist behind them, like, oh, oh my God, this oh, fucking guy. I love the Egyptologist. He's like, they're, they're, he's a nasty man. He might be the most immoral man in this movie. Yeah, like, oh, yes, they're being led by a woman. Yeah, well, what, what do women even know? Even past that, when they're digging in for shit, and he's like, oh, oh, don't I, you do, open I, them. I brought some nameless yeah, Arabs let the local, with us. Yeah, like, really. Jesus Christ, He's dude. like, let the diggers open this. And the yes. diggers open it and just get destroyed by salt. Uh, like a salt, salt booby acid, trap. Yeah. yeah. He, and he doesn't give a fuck, man. Uh, that guy had just coming off the role of a very despicable character in 1997's Titanic. Real life biggest bitch ever. Jay- is it Jay Bruce Ismay? Yeah, the guy who was like, Bruce less Ismay. lifeboats, more deck space. <laughs> Let's go, baby. We're unsinkable. And then he uh, survived because he was like one he of the- hopped on that lifeboat. He hopped on a lifeboat with who a bunch of women Who else was in Titanic in this kids. movie? Oh, um, the guy, the, 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 oh, the, Winston war, the, yeah, the, the, the air, the pilot, the pilot dear, who shows up out of nowhere. Like he's fucking King Herod sitting in the desert with like a umbrella. Yeah. Over he's him. got like a servant, like a man servant with an umbrella that has tassels on it. Yeah. He's just like this British, Living the life. British world war one pilot who didn't die with the rest of his crew. But that guy's in Titanic as one of our favorite members of Titanic. Yeah. Uh, just. The cutest man in that movie. It's the large, rich, mustached man. He just always is cheerful mm-hmm. in Titanic. He was fun. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, and I like that after he's like, they're led by a woman. What what could she know? And then it cuts to her. Like, she just, it's talking about, like, all the shit she knows about. And I'm like, oh, man, this movie is woke. Right? Woke mommy, baby. Dude, if this movie came out now, so many people would be bitching about how fucking how woke it the is. The mommy's woke now. <laughs> uh, Carl Emley Jr. is rolling in his grave <laughs> because the mommy's gone woke. <laughs> But don't worry, right after that, our one of the main characters, the brother, asked, where'd our smelly little friend get to? <laughs> what, they they finally they make it to the city, right? Well, well they're, they're, they're on the boat, and the Magi attack the boat. They, like, oh, swim yeah, up, yeah, yeah. and since they're not listening for borders, see if thieves joke, they get on, and there's a fun action sequence. One of my favorite moments is when O'Connell's shooting, and then he has to reload, and Evie sees the gunshots go in, in order close to his head, and then pulls him out of the way as one, like, Goes to where his head There's would be. There's such fun little, like, just tight little choreographed moments yeah. that are so cute and just elevated, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, almost cartoony. Yeah. And it's so fun. It's it's fun. It's charming. And there's lots of fire stunts. Uh, they every, All the named characters jump off the boat before it just goes down in flames. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> one of the quotes that my friends and I would always fucking do, Gressel knows. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey O'Connell! Looks like I got all the horses. 
Hey, Benny, looks to me like you're on the wrong side of the river. <laughs> I don't know why that was so fucking funny to sixth grade me, but <laughs> all sixth graders universally yeah. wrong side of the river. Big it's a laugh. universal joke. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they they eventually get to the city. How did no one? I mean, I guess it's nineteen. What year is this? Twenty six. Yeah, I guess stuff's harder to find back then. But it doesn't seem like they have any trouble kind of walking up, you know. Which I'm like, how did no one? really find it i mean i guess well they have to wait for the sunrise remember that like oh, unlocks yeah. a mirage or some uh-huh. shit because because it's so funny they like they they uh o'connell leads his team there and then benny leads the americans there and one of the americans pulls up he's like what the hell are we doing <laughs> <laughs> just like waiting there so yeah they have a little race 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 mm-hmm. i hope i win i hope i win to get to the city of the dead and uh evie is the first one there so i guess they win that they never really follow up on that yeah this is when i think uh benny's like whipping o'connell as they race there on camelback mm. and then o'connell pulls benny off and benny just gets stampeded by a fucking camel dude. yeah around here there i think the americans had like a bet or something about who would get to the city yeah that first. was the race that's yeah. the fi- okay I was, yeah, yeah. that's the bet okay a mm-hmm. uh, 500 dollars bet i did the math on inflation <laughs> calculator one of my favorite things to do uh mid movie uh it's about 8400 bucks now it's a lot yeah that's a ton of money to be gambling on something like mm-hmm. that but i guess those silly americans Evie wants to find the book of Amun Ra. Yes. Uh, for the a his- golden book. Right? Yes. And O'Connell knows that it's golden. And she's like, oh, you know your history. You know your history. Uh, but. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Just slip and slide. Just a big old is, slip and slide. That is no longer a desert. No. Uh, <laughs> They they find the sarcophagus. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't it fall down. It looks like it falls yeah, it on them. Yeah, because uh, all... Jonathan's like practicing his swing, his golf swing. <laughs> that thing just falls right down. It's a universal picture. <laughs> yeah. Roll credits. It's after they have their little shootout, mm-hmm. and she notices like it's it's another great moment for her where she notices that like they can dig underneath. And mm-hmm. She like gets them to lower the gun. She's like, there are other places to dig. So the Americans just find the Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon, mm-hmm. not the Book of Amun Ra. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though the e- Egyptologist doesn't know how to open it, and they find a sarcophagus with a mummy inside, mm-hmm. and it looks like he scratched shit on the o- on the inside of his thing. Uh, and there are fingernails, which makes sense to me. But then she's like, he he left a message, and it looks very well engraved. It looks- yeah, like I don't think he could have scratched that. Did he have a tool? I don't know. But it says death is only the beginning, <clears throat> mm-hmm. which will also be his final words. Spoiler alert. Oh, this is when she kind of talks about her background. And she's also, she's half Egyptian, mm-hmm. kind of like the, the girl in the original movie. So she's kind of like a... Like a nod to that, yeah. Yeah, like a nod to that. Although it doesn't end up factoring in the way it does in the original. Because the original, it's like she's... Kind of like a reincarnation, reincarnation yeah. and here, of his lover. And here, Imhotep, I think, just wants to use he, her He, to like, bring mistakes back her for, like... For a second. And then is like, oh, you're just a chick. You'll do. Yeah. I'll use you for my ritual. Like, she doesn't have any supernatural connection to... But she does bring him back because... That's right. She is the one who brings him back. Because she takes the book from the Egyptologist while he's sleeping, and she uses the key that Jonathan gave her. Uh, to open that book and yeah. she reads from it. Mm-hmm. She fucking reads from the book, which is dumb, but I do like how she takes ownership of it later. Because she kind of plays the role of, again, going back to the original, there's like the 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 diggers, like the, the excavation team who are like, well, I'm not superstitious. Like this is just some old like yeah. hokum. And then he <laughs> reads it out loud. And yeah, so she kind of fulfills that role because yeah, it makes sense. Academic. She's like, yeah, she's academic and she's logical and doesn't believe in ghosts and stuff. So she reads the book and a uh, locust, just immediately locusts. <laughs> yeah. Just fill the sky. <laughs> and uh, there's a, we get our first glance of the CGI mummy. Mm-hmm. He's He's back. He wakes up. He screams into the camera. Mm -hmm. He's there. Yeah, the locusts kill a lot of the diggers uh, who are with the Americans. And I wrote down, the locusts kill the last of the diggers. No, there's still a few that they keep around for other deaths. Don't worry. Yeah. Because one gets uh, trips and gets eaten by those beetles and is left a little skeleton after that. Mm -hmm. Because you got to see what those beetles do, you know? Oh, yeah. We didn't the the warden during the excavation. He gets a beetle. He he like finds yes, an engraving right. with the the beetles on the wall, and he's like 
Uh, He's popping them out of there like, yes, these will fetch a nice <laughs> one, <price."> more. <laughs> one more. One <laughs> more. One more. But then out of the, the, like, the jewel beetles come like a real beetle and it gets in his skin and it's just crawling and it's bubbling. It, lo- it doesn't look great. It doesn't but look very good. But gets all up in his face. And then, yeah, I guess he, he just decides to kill it by running headfirst into a wall. Yeah, not very well thought out, but. Mm-hmm. No one really cares that he dies. No, he's never mentioned again. Well, no, Jonathan's like, oh, he has some good taste. Here's some 12-year-old uh, scotch That's or something. Right. They're like, it was he was smelly and disgusting and a pig, but I'll take I'll, I'll take his it, booze. the rest of his liquor. <laughs> R.I.P. that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so brutal. He served his purpose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the, the thing with the mummy coming back is the the people who like open the what is it the four guys who opened the book of the dead or or like what was it they opened the thing with the scroll in it i forget it's the it's the box with the book in it okay and all this dust comes out so it's the three americans and the egyptologists yes henderson burns and david's yeah so they become cursed because they open the box that has a clear warning like don't open this you're gonna get cursed yeah benny gets the fuck out of there before yeah he runs he he knows what's up Um, so imhotep is gonna be hunting these guys down one by one and each time he does he adds a little bit more of arnold Vosloo to him yeah, he, plays he takes like Their like skin physical essence from them and like. Although the first it. guy burns, he takes his eyes, and that guy's blind without his glasses. So, mm-hmm. um, plot hole. Yeah, uh, the mummy ding. is nearsighted. Yeah, yeah. Canon. He also takes his tongue. Mm-hmm. That fucking sucks for burns. Mm-hmm. Getting your eyes and tongue taken out. That's not. I love how later they're at the bar and O'Connell's like, "How's your friend?" And the guy's like, like uh, "Bad." Yeah, he had his eyes and tongue taken out. How would you be? Yeah, yeah. pretty bad. Pretty bad. And Evie sees the mummy, and then they don't fuck around. They're just like, oh, yeah, and Rick O'Connell comes in, and he also he, sees the mummy. Yeah, and then he, like, blasts him with a shotgun. Well, yeah, because the and mummy then roars gets, at him, and Rick just roars back goes, him and shoots ah! him. Shoots him, and then he's like, took care of it. Don't worry, guys. Uh, Mummy... I yeah, he it. comes out. He's like, "Don't worry, I took it. I got it. It's fine." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the Egyptologist is like, "No, you fucking idiot. Yeah, that's not how you do that." <laughs> There's a scene around here where we we check back in with the guy who lost his eyeballs, and I think Benny, because now, okay, so Benny, we should establish. Oh yeah, is now working for the mummy. Yeah, that little bastard. Because what happens is, and I think this is a very funny character it is a good gag, gag because it tells you so much about him. Is at first. Benny ha- it has like a cross around his neck and he's holding it up and praying because uh, the mummy is advancing on him. And then he kind of like shuffles around and he has another necklace on. He just cycles through like every religion, religion and yeah. does a prayer for him. And he's wearing like 20 different necklaces. And finally, he's holding a-, a Star of David. And the mummy's like, the language of the slaves. You're my new assistant. Congrats. <laughs> you're hired. Yeah. Uh, You'll and get rich. so now Benny, uh, what does he say? He's like, it's better to be at like the, was it the right hand mm-hmm. of the devil than in his path or mm-hmm. something? Yeah. Yeah. So he helps, he leads Imhotep to the city where uh, one, they can finish off Burns, take off, take the rest of his in stuff. In a scene where the mummy is wearing this weird outfit that he only has on in this scene because it's covering his face and mm-hmm. he's got this weird mask on. He's not talking. Oh, yeah, he has a mask. And instead Benny is like, like leaning in and listening to him, and then it's like the mo- or Emotep of, and it, all I could think of was the fucking Prince talk show from Saturday Night Live, where Maya Rudolph is Beyonce and is like, Prince would like for you to sit on the uh, purple waterbed over there, and the, 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 like it, that's all I could think of. But I don't know why he's got this weird little outfit in this scene yeah. just to take it off. Well, it's because after he takes Burns' skin, he's a little bit more person. Yeah. I think he still has it when he tracks down the Egyptologist in the streets. Mm, okay. Uh, because then he, like, turns to face Rick O'Connell. Oh, you're and he right. starts to look like Arnold Vosloo there. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, Arnold Vosloo, I believe, did all the mocap for the mummy himself instead of having someone else do it. Oh, that's it, cool. Which is cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what that guy is in other than this, but I always thought he was fucking perfect as Imhotep. Yeah, I like cool. his look. Mm-hmm. He's very... He's very cool. Yeah. He's scary. I wonder if it's him on the ride at Universal. Oh. Doing the voice where he like yells at you. Or he at first he shows you like, oh, all of my riches. And then he's like, ha, huh, just kidding. <laughs> now your soul belongs to me. And then it does the big <laughs> launch into that first loop. That's a fun short that's a, ride. That's a fun ride. Yeah. But I wonder if that's him. 
Uh, if it's not, dude, I would ki- I, like I would kill to be like a voice on a, in a theme park thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people will hear you. That'd be so fun. This is when Evie is like, you know what? I'm the one who brought him back, so I'm going to stop him. She takes ownership. Mm-hmm. She refuses to just run away from the problem because it'll end the world. And she uh, wants to stop him. Rick would rather flee, but, you know, uh, he's. This is when we meet that Winston guy who's all drunk. I love Winston. <laughs> Winston Havelock. Oh, my British friends got shot down, but I, I survived. Oh, what was oh, me? Oh, the Great War. We called it that for a reason. Oh. It fucking ruled, and I didn't die in it, and that and sucks. Now I'm bored and drunk. Everything turns to blood. Uh, yeah, we get plague. all the plagues. Mm-hmm. We get frogs. Did frogs happen? Uh, I don't think the frogs happen. We just get a. Did we, we run out of CGI budget for frogs? Well, the bring back the locusts. We get two tastes of locusts. Yeah, there's a lot of bugs, mm-hmm. and then we get boils and. Oh yeah, the boy. So yeah, so they go to Evie's boss, who turns out is also a member of the Magi. Yeah, because he's hanging out with Art of Bay, mm-hmm. and they're like the Magi, and they're like, yeah, we got to protect things, and he's just like, oh my god, my fucking employee did what? Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly the bookshelf thing isn't that bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're all oh, doomed we're all gonna be enslaved by a 3700 year old man oh yeah because earlier when evie and jonathan showed him the map that they find in the key he like burns it on yes. purpose he's like oh oh how did that happen and i forgot the whole thing where he's part of the and he he would have done that on purpose but i'm like dude are you like you're like a librarian and you're just Whoa, whoops. yeah but it was to protect it's the city purpose. it's mm-hmm. good it's good stuff it's good yeah so they're like yeah we got to stop this and if we have to kill innocent people we will which they do oh they yeah definitely do there's they a lot of that kind of mow over a line of innocent people with a jaw and then that boss one. like just shoots them down <laughs> yeah. he's like kind of like stuck off in the or no I, it's it's the last American mm-hmm. who like falls off and he's just shooting all these like they're like possessed so yeah, they're gonna kill him. Yeah, but still it's not their fault. They're yeah, they're brainwashed. They're possessed and covered in boils. Like but it sucks for them. It but sucks. yeah, they definitely make them covered in boils and sores so that we won't feel bad when they're I, all getting I shot. I think so. I think it's very strategic. So you're not just like, oh my god, those are just people. No, yeah. that now they look weird. Now they're gross. They're gross. So you can shoot them. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there, there is a moment, I don't know when it happens, but it, it's when the eclipse happens. And oh, yeah, it's after the, the CGI fire meet, the like ancient aliens fire meteors that rain down from the sky. Oh, yeah, but then some of them are practical, and I don't know <laughs> yeah. where these giant flames are coming from above lighting these stunt performers on fire. It's amazing. I'm a wizard. But also, Benny tr- like is leaving and then tries to, to go away without Rick seeing him, and he does. Rick fucking malignant throws a chair at Benny. It's, it's fucking awesome. The way he throws this chair. Pulls it. Yeah, it's very Gabriel, it's very Gabriel and malignant. Gabriel. That thing goes flying and I love it. Yeah, and he's like holding his head up to the ceiling fan to get information out mm-hmm. of him. Benny just gets out of there by jumping out a window. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, oh, that was before the Egyptologist got killed. And then the and then Henderson also get like Imhotep can turn into sand. Yeah, he can turn into sand. Um, I think it was when he turned into sand, you said, hmm, he would be an interesting horror survivor contestant. Yep. If that fucker can turn into sand. Uh Uh-huh. But he also can't speak English. That's why he has Benny. Because obviously he's been in a a coffin for 3,000 years. Yeah. He wouldn't be able to speak English. Mm -hmm. But that is a challenge for survivor. Sure. He'd be interesting. He'd be interesting. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, Would his loved one be Benny? But he like... No, it'd be Oxen (laughs) Moon. Sorry, Anxanaman. My true love is this guy I found underground <laughs> who claims he's Jewish. <laughs> I don't know if he actually is, but it works for me. <laughs> yeah, so because he, he turns into sand and goes through the keyhole so he can creep on Rachel Weiss, right? Something like that. Oh, and that, yeah, O'Connell scares him away with a cat because yes. they don't really bring up the cat thing too much, but that is in the... 
He's not afraid of because cats. He, no, he, he has runs, a cat. He has a cat, and, and it's bossed. It's and he uses that cat to kill a dog. Yeah, he sticks this cat on a dog because like the a cat big dog. is basically like a supernatural, like it's a god cat. Is it bossed? That hang, bossed. Yeah, that hangs out another, with If him. we get a white cat, bossed. Bossed would be a great for name sure. For it. Yeah, no, I feel like in in the original, the mummy like has a pet cat that he hangs out with, and they're chill. Yeah, but in this one, he's scared. He's of scared them. of them. They don't really expound too much upon that. No, but. I think they just kind of rely on audience knowledge of like cats are significant in to some Egypt, way to yeah. ancient Egypt and so, yeah, whatever. whatever. You know, whatever. At this point, I think I stopped writing and just wanted to enjoy the movie. So uh, there's also just a lot of like action and back and forth stuff. Yeah, we're flying a plane because we get Winston because he the, the mummy takes Rachel Weiss back to the city of the dead to like complete this ritual. And this is after he's he's killed all the Americans and is now oh, yeah. fully Arnold Vosloo. It's after the Americans and and all the rest of our main cast just run over a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, dude. And they floor. No, it, O'Connell specifically cuz I think Jonathan's driving and he stops because there's like a crowd in front of him. And O'Connell's like, blast him. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> just fucking steps. Th- yeah. And it's funny because you can tell the moment they get to that street. I just, you can tell that stunts are going to happen there. there there's going to be the the low angle shot as a car rounds a corner and someone's going to fly off of the car into the camera. Yeah. You know, there's going to mm-hmm. be that shot. Mm-hmm. And there is. Yeah. And yeah, that's when they grab the last... Uh, I think David's the last American mm-hmm. and eat him up. Yum, yum. So they, they go back to Hamanaptra via sandstorm. Mm-hmm. Cause she, just, there's just this big ass sandstorm and then sh- her and Benny get spit out. She's like, get off me, Benny. So I, like he just tornadoed them. He can travel via sandstorm. Yeah. And then I, I do like the effect of the sandstorm uh, swirling down into Imhotep. Yeah, it's like cool. Like it forms an M. Meanwhile, the heroes uh, enlist drunken death wish pilot Winston Havelock to fly them there. Guys, <laughs> you hang out with this dude at this bar. You know he wants to die yeah. in a plane crash. You don't hire that guy to take you anywhere especially if there's gonna be some action that guy's gonna just get you all killed yeah he just he's like i'm coming brothers <laughs> but he's flying o'connell's in the gunner seat and then they just taped jonathan and the magi to the wings yeah and they're the, at this point in the movie i think that the magi character gets ruined I think he becomes too silly. Oh, sure. Earlier on in the movie, he's, got he's some like, mystique. he's mis- yeah. yeah, he's he's the uh, like the narrator and the here he's like taped down to the wing of a plane, <laughs> and Brendan Fraser is like, "How you doing?" And he's just like, he gives like a thumbs up or so. He looks goofy as fuck, and it's dumb. Yeah. And then later he like he pulls a uh, what'd you say from Dune? Oh no, he's like Jason. Oh yeah, Momoa, Jason Momoa from where Dune. he's like goodbye, Timothy Chalamet. To go fight him, but then just... he's he does survive in the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's in the sequel at least. Nice. Yeah, and they all come back. Uh, so yeah, now we're back. Except at... Winston, who dies. In the oh world. yeah, because the fucking so so Imhotep <laughs> sips <laughs> yeah. six a sandstorm on them that also is his face. Yeah. And, and it's so like he, trying to swallow the plane and as Rick O'Connell shooting the sand mm-hmm. with his little machine gun Which, on the like, back of the brain. Great. No notes, Rick. If you shoot got, the sand. It's that or nothing. I don't. So I mean, I guess. Give I don't it a know shot, what whatever. But it crashes the plane and everyone survives except for maybe Winston, who's like conked out in the driver's seat. O'Connell checks his pulse and turns to Jonathan. And Seems we, like he's a, maybe about to it could go either confirm way. Confirm or deny. Yeah, we don't get a definitive. He dead? He's dead or he's not. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the plane starts sinking into quicksand. So if Winston was alive, he's not for long because yeah. we just watch him slowly sink like the fucking station wagon in Tremors. <laughs> yeah, for just sure. like goes underground. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he got what he wanted. <laughs> he did. Happy, uh, happy character for him. Did Winston know? That supernatural stuff was happening, or was the giant sand face trying to eat them a uh, kind of a revelation for well, him? Well, that was behind him. I, I don't know if he, he saw it. You think he just went that whole time not realizing I think we're he, fighting an, a mummy? Yeah, I think he was flying. Who do you think they were fighting? I don't know if it mattered, maybe. I think he, he saw the first natural disaster that could lead to his death and flew straight into it. <laughs> sure. He was like, this is it. This is the best I'm going to get. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Taped to the wings. Mm-hmm. 
I guess this is like the what the last stretch of the movie kind of right because yeah because they get back in there in like the yeah like my notes are uh, the priests come back the gold guys yeah get the rest of my notes are just mummy fight there's a, it's you know it's the end of an action movie where like every little thing that they have to do is prolonged by like an action sequence yeah. whether it be a fight scene or a chase scene or what and the fights are cool mm-hmm. uh they they work mm-hmm. it's just you know it's, it's just extending out drawing out we use this like one staircase Oh, my God. A lot. It's the staircase that when they're being chased by the Beatles, Jonathan and Rick jump to one side and Evelyn jumps to the other. It's that tall staircase. They use that set piece bunch, so much. Yeah. I mean, I think it might. It's maybe supposed to be the same staircase. Oh, it definitely okay, is. Yeah. They, they just keep going just back keep and going forth. There. Yeah. Yeah. Imhotep brings back Aunt Sunamun's yeah. mummified body. And she's, she's like fighting with Evelyn. There's but like, yeah, and then she's almost, she's up and she's fighting and stuff. Yeah, it's a little like mummy lady. And then she's stopped by what? The the priests come back, but then Jonathan reads words to take control of them and they kill uh, yeah, Aunt Yeah, I guess again. you can use that book and read, it. if you read something from it, that's what you gain control of the... I guess. I don't know. Whatever. That's something we learn in that scene. Yeah. When when the uh the mummified priests are back, they're like they look like mum like the classic mummies. They Not- look pretty good. There's yeah. they're CGI in this fight scene yes. with Brandon Fraser, but they look pretty good. There had to have been some kind of stand in though. Oh it, yeah. I don't cause like there's CG elements because they're getting cut in half mm-hmm. and like half their bodies are disappearing, but there's also this like impact and and tangible effect to him fighting that it looks great for what it is for what they're doing it looks amazing for 1999 i couldn't tell but i think the blade of his sword might also be cg okay and then i think they probably use uh maybe an amputee uh near the end of like a practical mummy crawling towards him possibly because it's like a half body oh or is it just like lieutenant dan magic Oh, ah, maybe. Just yeah. like taped legs, something like that. I don't know. I don't know, but like it, it switches between the CG mummies and like some practical, real dusty looking mummies, mm-hmm. and it's great. It's a I I like when he, he does an overhead swing to kill one, and there's one behind him that he didn't even yeah, know about. Yeah, he rips and his he, head off. He takes with the, the head of that mummy. That's to, cool, yeah. Yeah. It's it's good. It's again just nice little moments and beats in these action sequences mm-hmm. that keep things fun and exciting. Yeah. Uh, they take away Imhotep's soul? Yeah, I think they read, is it the book of Amun-Ra? Yeah, the golden book. They finally, because they realized like, oh, it was mistranslated. scholars switched. That was when she was trying to translate and it was like, patience is a virtue. Not right now it isn't. Uh The was approaching, but she figured out, oh, it must be buried over here instead. So, uh, they go to, oh, that's in, uh, it's like under... Oh, there, it's a statue of Horus. Horus, that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but anyway, so basically they they do some magic and they make Imhotep mortal. Like a chariot, a ghost chariot drives Dude, a through ghost him. ghost chariot! And then takes his soul it's and his soul cool. is like, wait, come back. And he's like chasing after them like, hold on, you have my soul. And they disappear, but then he's still standing there. Mm-hmm. And both of us were like, wait, what? And like, even Rick O'Connell's like, wait, what? And they stabs him and Evie's like... Made immortal. immortal. And all of us, us and Rick, were like, oh, okay. Yep. You got us. So R.I.P. Imhotep. Mm-hmm. Um, that just leaves Benny. Yep. And now we all got to get out of here because it's turning into a big booby trap. Well, see, I think that you were writing something. So did you realize that Benny is the one who set this off? No, I didn't. Yeah, I, I was I saw you were right Because he, he like, Benny is loading up bags of treasure mm-hmm. and he loads them onto a horse or a mummy, a, a oh camel, a fucking camel. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> and then there's a shot of him like looking back like, I could go back for more. Mm. And so he does. And on his second trip out, he like sets the bags on a switch and oh. depresses it and sets off the booby trap. Okay. So he causes it himself. So now they all have to get out of there. And to his credit, Rick tries to uh, help Benny out of there. But he can't, and then he gives his last goodbye, Benny. Yeah. And he leaves. <laughs> and so Benny's trapped in there, and he gets eaten by scarabs. Yeah. You said you wished that the Beatles weren't there. I kind of wished that it was Benny's now just trapped in here, because it's in the room with all the treasure, and I kind of just wish it was like him 
he's just trapped now in this room and he's got all of his tra- he finally has all the treasure he could possibly want but it means nothing now cuz he's just stuck in here forever and he'll just starve to death i don't know yeah that also would have left him open to come back in the sequel there maybe. you go but he doesn't <laughs> much to the chagrin of young me yeah uh and so they they leave and they're like oh it sucks we didn't get any treasure not realizing that benny's treasure is on those camels not yep. mummies so they ride away into the sunset it's a universal picture it's a universal picture baby yeah good stuff it's so fun it is it's a nice it, yeah, it's just comfy. Yeah, I think a commentary track would be great for Mummy Returns. I really want to watch the sequel now. Yeah, it's like they're still together, they're married, they're still adventuring. That's fun. Is it still Egypt? I don't know because the third one There's, is China. It is still Egypt, but there is a big sequence in London. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, like in the city. In That's the city. right. I vaguely in the, remember in that. The, like National Museum. There's oh. a double decker bus sequence. Oh, we should watch it before the honeymoon if it's in London. Yeah. And we can be like, oh, this is the scene. <laughs> this is where the mummy returns. returns. There, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the thing that all of this is most known for. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much information to read about this movie if you feel so inclined. This thing was uh, in development from the late 80s. Clive oh, Barker, yes. Clive Barker was, was attached. Joe Dante Mick was... Garris wrote one or two treatments. Yeah, George it, Romero was Romero, involved. Romero, and they tried to get Craven. Like, what the they fuck? They really tried, and then... They tried to... I mean, they got all... They went through... A, ton of horror guys until they it landed on someone who was like nah it's a action kind of it's like an action it's indiana and, jones yeah which i think works really well mm-hmm. uh i never saw the tom cruise one but no, uh, you I know apparently it's bad enough to have ended their attempts Dude, to the dark the universe dark bring back the dark universe universal i know right? you know just go for it like generally i am opposed to universes at this point because it's too fucking much to keep track of but, but this dark wh- universe is so funny they don't Bring need to call it, it the dark universe back. let's go but the universal monsters were a connected universe yeah back in the fucking 40s oh yeah they had them all meeting each other and yeah the yeah. only issue is now like invisible man the the remake is so separate it's so separate and and good. That version of the Invisible Man's like not a fun guy. <laughs> yeah, you know that's a domestic. I don't abuser. want. Yeah, that guy's just a, an abusive boyfriend. I don't need him running around and meeting Frankenstein stuff. <laughs> that guy sucks. Yeah. Uh. So I don't know, but if they ever figure it out, I'd be down yeah. to watch it for sure. Yeah. All right. Anything else? I don't think so. Uh. Thanks for putting up again with the weird schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything is all. Fucked up right now. We're trying our best. Fucked up, man. Trying our best. Yeah. uh, Friday is the frog's kill count. It's... I recorded it today. It's it's an all-timer for the script. I mean, hey, if you're a podcast listener, which clearly you are, if Mm -hmm. you're listening, especially towards the end of this one, we're not talking about the movie anymore. Yeah. uh, You've probably listened to our episode on frogs, so you should go watch the kill count. Yeah. And it's... uh, it's, Because I know... I. I'm just pumping it here because it's an old movie and it's not going to do as well as right. others. But like the Kill Count script, it's just so funny. It's it's a real fun one. It's a real fun Kill Count script. I promise. It's real funny. And it'll be my last Kill Count for a couple of months. Mm-hmm. So get your 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 dose of me while you can. Then Zorn's taking over with Deep Rising. Mm-hmm. So very on brand for this. And then he's going to do- I love that you're going out with frogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. I know. It's like, make sure you do like a big- Popular one before you go, James. Okay. Frogs. 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 1972 frogs, baby. <laughs> Damn, I love frogs. But at this point, I want to do the movies I want to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because who That's knows? kind of when we get back to a more regular schedule on the podcast. I miss covering old movies. 2022 was weird because so many good new movies came out that people wanted us to talk about. Which is fair. But I want to get back to talking about weird old shit. And you had said that, and I was like, this isn't old old no but it's not new but, no. and it's it's kind of like in the vein of what we used to cover more often of mm-hmm. like just like yeah and more research episodes i want to do yes it's just hard to find the time mm-hmm. uh after deep rising uh, this is breaking news zorn will be covering the collector and the collection that's why i was watching nice. that today when i was working out yeah yeah, yeah. Home. uh and then he'll be doing yeah fuck it i'll say he's doing critters after that yeah. so that will be the zorin run uh, this time through mm-hmm. a lot of Zoran. He does a great job. He does. Thank you, Zoran. <laughs> um, all right. That's it. 
in social terms of meets. that stuff, yeah, social media, Dead Meat James on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. And I'm at Carabeck, C-R-E-V-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, DeadMeatStore.com. Yeah. Thank you, Gressel, as always. Thank you, Gressel. Thank you, Gressel. This. You're very welcome. Thank you, Glad Molly. you got a mic. Sorry you didn't, uh, you know, I, when was the last time you watched this? We actually watched all, we didn't watch the third one. We watched both here since we've lived in the house oh so yeah. pretty recently. recently yeah they're they're, fun. they're a great if you don't enjoy the first new mummy not the first mummy but you know what i mean the 99 mummy uh-huh. you don't like movies <laughs> like come damn. on damn that, that damn is, that is everything a movie should be it's right a, that's a, it kind of feels it's like not that. a great movie but it is a great movie yeah yeah mm-hmm. thanks so much so until next time i'm chelsea i'm james that's Russell. hey And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast.